Thank you very much. Uh, so hello, my name is uh, Peter Zobets. Uh, I'm coming from Ljubljana. I'm a PhD student under the mentorship of uh, Professor Vierney Clemens. So just a brief uh, introduction about poles in structures. So the machines, the structures that brought us here, they have poles and they are de facto loaded in fatigue because these are dynamic machines. Uh, like for example, an aircraft wing has a lot of poles and also some railway systems have poles inside. Basically all engineering structures have poles. But what's the problem with poles? You probably understand and know that a pole introduced in a structure uh, introduces some, let's say, stress concentration. This, of course, when dynamic load is applied, means that this stress concentration is also uh, affecting the dynamic load. The dynamic load is higher. So this is a critical detail, let's say, in engineering structure. Vera crack is likely to nucleate and also uh, then grow throughout the structure. So we are, of course, uh, very clever humans, so we designed uh, uh, some remedy uh, for this. So one example, how to uh, somehow prolong the time for a crack to nucleate from a pole, it's an example of a pole a cold hole expansion. It's not nothing got to do with temperature, but we do it, it's ambient temperature. So the basic idea is that we pull a mandrel, so it's this tool through the hole, and this mandrel has a circumference slightly bigger than the actual hole. Uh, this is, introduces uh, a local region of uh, plastically deformed material that is when shaped loaded in tension, but when the mandrel is removed, it introduces a compression because the surrounding material pushes, push, uh, pushes uh, back into the hole. And so we have this state. So we have some compressive stress uh, near the hole. This is, uh, of course, very, very good for fatigue load because it means it lowers the mean stress of a fatigue load. So with lower mean stress, it means normally that uh, life is prolonged, like you see in this example, where white dots represent a hole that is not cold expanded and black triangles uh, with expanded hole. We see that in the SN curve, the life is improved. Okay, so this has been the state of the art and not much research has been done in the last 10 years or so. We are focusing on something a bit different, but still considered to be a part of this whole expansion process. So we have designed this uh, specimen, this very similar to the compact tension specimen, uh, but instead of a sharp notch, we introduced a round notch as a sort of engineering detail. So some stress concentration, uh, and at that notch, a crack is likely to grow. By applying loads to these two large holes, denoted here as vectors F, we imply some bending stress on this uh, symmetrical axis. Okay. So we positioned this hole, uh, hole, it's going to be called expanded, near the neutral axis of this thing. So the loading on the specimen itself doesn't affect the residual stress state around this hole. Okay, at the moment, I can only show you the numerical results about this, but the experiment is already set up more or less. So here I show two examples. The left one on the top, it's an example without fold expansion. So we see that the crack grows in the predicted way. It moves a bit toward the, the hole, probably because there is this material there, but more or less this uh, fatigue crack grows in this direction that it's uh, predicted to. Now, what we are, uh, when we apply this whole expanded procedure, we introduce this compressive stress, we have expected that the crack will go around it. So go away from this, uh, from this hole, but uh, the numerical results somehow show that the crack goes towards the hole, which is very interesting. Of course, I thought at that time that there's something wrong with the algorithm of particular growth, but then I reconsidered the actual hole expansion procedure. So yes, we expand the hole, we get a region of compressive stress near the hole, but because this is residual stress, it has to be in equilibrium inside without any applied external loads. So we have a ring around this compressive stress, that is intention. Intention again raises the fatigue load. So we believe that this is the cause that pulls the crack toward the hole. So now, if this is correct, and also of course, when we're gonna test this in the experiment, uh, this means that we have to reconsider this 
good holes that are called expanded as the regions where it attracts and actually accelerates a crack because uh, we are testing a crack that nucleates away from this hole. Okay. So this is it. It's a very short presentation about the basic concept that I'm doing uh, currently. The setup, as we see, it's already set up. We have a camera that's going to track the, uh, the crack. Uh, and this is going to, of course, prove or falsify our hypothesis. Also, uh, in the meantime, or parallel, let's say, uh, we are also testing the, this T-crack growth algorithm that grows the crack inside the fan mesh. Uh, like, as you can see, these are uh, some of the first initial steps. <laughs> it grows like this, and now it grows more or less in a predicted in a predicted manner. So we are still in this case of uh, validating. So thank you very much. Uh,